of the New Forest National Park. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week, is there really a war on the roads? We discuss a provocative article in the Times newspaper that states that motorists are winning their battle against cyclists. We also have a bike thief who wants to be like Phil Guyman, a new world hour record, and the world's first ever continuous carbon fibre single piece unibody frame. I don't know what one is, but I think I might want one. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Matthew van der Poel can do anything, including winning in white shorts. It's out of Philippe who takes up on the right-hand side. Look at van der Poel going from behind, though. Look at van der Poel on the left-hand side. Matthew van der Poel's going to do it. Matthew van der Poel, this is incredible. I've never, ever seen anything like this in my life. I hate to say it, Dan, but he actually makes white shorts look cool when he does that. Many people do. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> anyway, it's undoubtedly one of the greatest race finishes you will ever watch. But the amazing thing about Samstel Gold Race is that actually we had two on the same day because Kazia Nuiadoma won the women's race in nail-biting fashion. What an incredible day of racing Amazing. that was on Sunday. All right, slight change of pace now, because we also learnt this week that bicycle banana art is a thing. What? Uh, here are three photos that we had sent to us on our uploader by Danny, uh, one from each of the classics. Wow. I think that's Peter Sagan on the Paru Bay one as well. And it reminded me of one of my favorite cartoons as a kid, Banana Man. <laughs> Do you remember the intro? Yeah, I do indeed, yeah. Another couple of people out there might as well. Yeah, three or four. Uh, when Peter eats a banana, amazing transformation occurs. Peter becomes Banana Man. <laughs> ah, genius. Uh, right, uh, another change of pace now, uh, because there was a highly provocative story printed in the major UK newspaper, The Sunday Times, where their journalist stated, and I quote, uh, motorists have scored a victory in their long-running battle with cyclists as, offic as official figures reveal a 355,000 drop in the number of regular leisure and commuter riders on the roads in 12 months. I couldn't believe what I was reading uh, on the Sunday with this. I mean, long running battle and victory. Like, what the actual... I know, really, really irresponsible journalism there. But the thing is, I think some cyclists are partly responsible for this rhetoric as well. So I saw uh, a link to that story on the bike website Road CC, where, ironically enough, they had uh, posted their story about that directly above what they call their near miss of the mm. day video, which to my mind is just fuel on the fire. It makes cyclists feel like they're unsafe on the roads because they have a daily reminder. And also it makes it seem like motorists are just out to get us. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, the fact is though, that unfortunately there are incidents on a daily basis where a cyclist gets knocked off by a motorist. Yeah. And if that is the fault of careless driving on the part of the motorist, then they should be duly punished. But what I can't get my head around is where this us and them mentality has come from. I mean, I'm the same person whether I'm driving my car or riding my bike. I'm, I'm a motorist and I'm a cyclist. Exactly. Your mode of transport does not define your behaviour. No. Idiots are idiots whether they're on a bike or behind a steering wheel. The only real difference is that you can do a lot more damage when you're driving a big chunk of metal than you can when you're on your bike. True. But that shouldn't make a difference to the way that you approach riding versus driving. Whatever your mode of transport, you should take responsibility for making sure it's safe. Absolutely. Now, coincidentally, uh, this tweet popped up into my feed today. Now, I don't know who posted it other than the fact that he's called Anthony, uh, but it was liked by a friend of mine and therefore it ended up on my feed. Um, anyway, he said, I'm on my bike yesterday. Land Rover comes up behind. He can't overtake due to oncoming cars. He waits a few seconds, then passes me with loads of room. I put my hand up to say thanks. He does the same once safely past me. Easy, really, isn't it? Mutual respect and thanks. Mm. Now, aside from the fact that the driver in this case acted exactly as he should have done, what I really liked was the fact that random Anthony put his hand up to say thank you, because there was that study we talked about recently on the GCN show, wasn't there, where we are dehumanized as cyclists by an alarmingly high percentage of motorists. 
And I think actions like that, waving to say thank you, will make us seem slightly more human. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's totally true. I mean, hopefully that can be like a reminder that while we might not be able to directly influence people's actions out on the road, indirectly we can. And I do think that part of that is by being polite and friendly towards motorists, towards other bike riders, so not getting all shouty and aggro on bike paths. No, that is a real big pet oh, hate man, of mine. mine too. Uh, and then extending the same courtesy to more vulnerable road users than ourselves as well, like pedestrians. Mm. I hope this discussion doesn't come across as controversial. It wasn't meant to be. In fact, Completely the opposite yeah. to that. Uh, but we would love to hear your opinions on this very subject. Do you think there is a war on the roads out there? Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below because we'd love to read them. Absolutely, and actually, just to get uh, an overall impression of what you think, perhaps we could just have a quick poll on the screen now and you can just vote and let us know, yes or no. GCN's weekly inspiration now, your chance to win one of three Wiggle voucher amounts. £100 for first place, second place nets you 75 and third gets you 50 uh, Before we start with the three pictures this week though, we have had somebody write in telling us what they did with their vouchers a couple of weeks ago. That's right, so uh, Ratchet, who uh, if you remember this was his image, which uh, was an absolute pearl, we loved that one, didn't he? Uh, he said uh, he shared his voucher with the two people that got him into cycling. So he bought an Osprey rucksack, so he can go bikepacking, a Topeak Mini 20 multi-tool for his brother, uh, and then also a Cati Padrone Smart Plus cycle computer. So there we go. Wow, generous black yeah, Absolutely, yeah, definitely got first prize with that haul. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, we do like uh, seeing exactly what you spent your vouchers on. So if you win anything, please let us know. Uh, so without further ado, let's get on to third place this week, which is this photo wow. sent in by Pista.Concelli over on Instagram. That's cool, isn't it? Over in uh, the cycling heartland of Girona, that is it. That's just cool, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's not like one of those shots where you go, oh, I really desperately want to go and ride my bike, but you oh. just got to admire the photo, haven't you? Well, I, I like a symmetrical photo <laughs> like that. That ticks the mathematical boxes in my brain. Uh, right, second place and getting 75 pounds of vouchers is, uh, well, not sure I'd say that, this one over at Mount Donna Buang. Wow. Size them trees. You can barely see the cyclists. They see that. That is inspirational, Dan. That looks amazing. It looks like some kind of prehistoric jungle with gravel. Perfect. You'd love that side, wouldn't you? Prehistoric that, jungle with gravel, yes, please. That yeah. ticks all the adventurous side of your brain, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it ticks everything, to be fair. Uh, and finally, in first place this week, we have this picture. Also, not sure, not sure this inspires me to ride because that looks mighty threatening, that sky. It inspires it? me to chuck a U turn down and <laughs> yes. go the other way as fast as I possibly can. But nevertheless, that is amazing, isn't yeah. it? That's Eurocycling Trips over on Instagram. Uh, they were riding from Canberra to Melbourne, and that was day one where apparently they avoided some impressive storms. It's impressive avoiding that storm because that looks pretty big, if it you does, ask me. Doesn't it? Uh, right, £100 of vouchers on their way to you. Let us know what you spend those on. Reminder of how to enter this each week. And I've used the uploader. There's a link to that in the description below. Or on Instagram, you can use the hashtag GCN Inspiration. If that was me who won that, mate, it'd be a timely reminder to make sure I've got a rain jacket. Yes. It's now time for cycling shorts. We're going to start cycling shorts now with a wattage bazooka! And not to the obvious picks of Nubia Doma and Van der Poel, but rather to Victor Campenaerts, who set a new world hour record just last week. That's right. Just after the GCN show went live, Campenaerts took to the track in Aguas Calientes in Mexico and absolutely smashed it. He set a new record of 55.089 kilometers, adding 563 meters onto Bradley Wiggins' record that he set four years ago. Four years ago? I know, that's terrifying, isn't it? Uh, now, what's interesting is that actually his estimated average power, according to the Yoda of aerodynamic cycling, Dan Bigham, Actually, it was just 330 watts. Now, bear in mind that that is at altitude, so the air pressure is uh, a lot lower, uh, and also meaning that he wouldn't be able to sustain uh, the same average power that he would at sea level because there's less oxygen and also, you know, the normal caveats about mm. extreme aerodynamic positions. But still, 330 watts. Still again, uh, another 10 weeks on surface, might give that a crack myself. Uh, but let's well, take go, nothing yeah. away from what it was an incredible ride. I mean, that average speed is bonkers, isn't it? It's easy to say, oh, 55 k's per hour, but when we were in Mallorca, I went down Sacalobra, I think my max speed was 53, <laughs> and that felt really fast, averaging 55 around a track. Well done, that's a well-deserved wattage bazooka right there. Yeah. In fact, 
be quite a cool little challenge out on the road. See if you can get to 55 kilometers an hour on a flat road. I would imagine not many people could. I, no way I can anymore, no way. If I ever could, in fact. Anyway, change uh, of track now, if you pardon the pun, uh, from Mexico to the Netherlands. Now, we already know that the Netherlands is a paradise for cycling, but this screen grab of an open map uh, that was taken by TC Focus really kind of shows that a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, if you're in any doubt, bike paths are on red, are red on here. Yeah. And the Netherlands is basically block red, isn't it? Yes. Now making an attempt to catch up with the Netherlands in terms of their cycling infrastructure is Beijing, uh, where apparently at the end of May they are due to open their first ever dedicated bicycle only road. Cool. They've got some way to go, but still you've yeah. got to start somewhere, haven't you? They're remarkable in a way that they don't have them already, given that there's two million shared bikes alone mm. in Beijing. Well, there's nine the million bicycles in Beijing, apparently. Yeah, well, that's a fact. A fact we can't deny. Yeah, facts like... I'm going to stop you, actually, because I've just remembered the rest of those lyrics. Uh, regardless, at the entrances and exits of this dedicated bike road, there are bicycle conveyor belts. I've got no idea what that means, but I really like the sound of that. Yeah, very much like the tech story that we've got coming up. Oh yes, out. the Franco e-bikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've teamed up with a company called Avivo to produce what they claim is the, I'm trying to remember this now, uh, the first ever continuous carbon fiber single piece unibody frame. Yeah. So, it turns out that basically that means it's a frame made in just one piece. That's now, right. a lot of people might think that that's a normal carbon fibre frame, but no, you remember that those are laid, laid? layers of carbon fibre uh, laid up over one another and arranged in a pretty pattern and then uh, baked with a resin. Uh, whereas this one is a continuous piece of carbon fibre that has been 3D printed and apparently uh, they are not only a world first in bikes, but perhaps a world first in any industry with potentially uh, the power to revolutionize the way bikes are made. Now personally I can't get my head around this given that I thought that carbon fiber was carbon fibers uh, that were reinforcing a resin and therefore they were two distinct different things but anyway. This is why they have clever people doing the inventing. Well exactly so, yeah. it all sounds very plausible and we don't doubt that they're doing what they say they are we just need to find out a little bit more info don't we? We do. Uh, we're going to move on now though to some news from Zwift because they've just added to their Watopia loops with something called the Fuego Flats. Uh, this is an extra 15 kilometer segment which is pretty much pan flat, which makes it ideal for time trial training. Or training for the hour record. Or just perfect for sit-in sprinters, uh, which in my experience actually, given my woeful sprint, it's just about everyone, whether that's in the real world or on Zwift. Uh, anyway, the new tarmac has meant that five new routes can be created, including the longest ever. So at 80 miles, the Uber pretzel has added an extra 12 miles on to the already mega pretzel, which uh, if you remember, includes the Alp de Zwift. Yeah. Tough one, that isn't it? Mm. Uh, you have to get to level 12 to unlock that new segment. I'm uh, going to move on to a bit of racing news now. And first up, something I was quite surprised about last week. It's emerged that Team Sky's performance director, Rod Ellingworth, will be leaving at the end of this year and moving over to Bahrain Merida. Yeah, big loss for mm. Sky, that isn't it? And a big win for Bahrain Merida, given that, that Ellingworth has has played a massively key part, you'd think, in just about every major Sky yeah. victory over the last 10 years, uh, including uh, by making his riders wash cars. What? Yeah, it's true that. So when he was heading up the British Cycling Academy for under 23 riders, which included guys like Cavendish and Geraint Thomas, uh, he once made them wash every single car in the British Cycling car park because oh. they turned up late to training. Now we're on something completely different now. Uh, I saw this story over on bicycling.com. So a man named Paul Verdigo nicked a $5,000 BH bike from the cycler shop over in California, but then he got so fed up with being recognized after, after CCTV <laughs> footage emerged and it was seen the world over that he called them up and made arrangements to take it back, hoping he'd be let off the hook. Bonkers, isn't it? Uh, now apparently Paul is, is just a cycling geek uh, that can't afford to ride the bikes that he lusts after. And such is his level of cycling geekery that he even cut the drops off his bars apparently so that he could be like Phil Gaiman. It's, it's a sorry state of affairs. What, trying to be like Phil Gaiman? No, nicking the bikes. O Ollie's yeah, already okay. tried cutting the bars off to be like Phil Gaiman and it clearly didn't work because he failed. <laughs> anyway, Vertigo did eventually return the bike to the shop where the police were waiting and duly arrested him and actually linked him to two similar crimes. Do they? Mm. Wow, crikey. Uh, right, one final story for you in cycling shorts. This is a perler. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, Dan uh, said that he didn't think that it was possible to smoke cannabis and ride bikes. I did. 
a few of you, as in you did say that, not you did. That, yeah. yeah, okay, not you tried. Uh, a few people in the comments said that uh, actually it was possible. And it turns out that since then, that all the while, a British cannabis enthusiast called Roger Boyd has actually been cycling 19,000 miles across three continents whilst vaping cannabis, which is apparently a thing, every 20 miles. Mm. Two so years it took him. That must have been a long old journey full of highs and lows. Yeah, mainly highs, you'd yeah. think. Apparently he was completely ripped by the end of it. Really? Mm. Well, you would do after all that yeah, mileage. A lot, a lot of calories burned. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. We're gonna dive straight in there with a custom GPS mount from Pedaling Padre. Look at that. That's nicely executed, isn't it? Well, not only is that neat, but the artwork is brilliant on that as well, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, and for a very niche uh, bike as well. That, I, I, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Super cool. Well done. Finished custom GPS mount. That's a hack from us, yep. I think. As is the next one, although it is at the other end of the spectrum budget-wise, but not everybody can afford to have the proper Wahoo or Garmin GPS. And go back to what we had when we were growing up, which is a standard Sigma bike computer. Oh, yes. uh, this was sent in by Blaz in Slovenia. Uh, he was jealous of the people with the centrally mounted Wahoos and Garmin's and decided to make his own mount for his Sigma using some old reflector mounts. Um, I'd say that's a hack, although please just shuffle it along by about a centimetre so it is central. Yeah, maybe just five mil. Maybe just five mil will do it, mate. Well, just make it central, whatever yeah. that millimeterage is. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, yeah, no, that's a definite hack. Uh, right, this one, this is another hack, man. I'm gonna call it right off the bat. This was sent in by Mike uh, from Sandy in Utah. We don't know why it's a hack, because we don't exactly know what rocker plates are. No, though, but, we? but we know that a lot of people like them, uh, so therefore there must be a <laughs> yes. purpose. Uh, so yeah, this goes under uh, your, your turbo trainer, so in this case it's a Wahoo, a Wahoo kicker. And it could be to make it slightly quieter, it could be to make it more comfortable because the bike can move underneath you a little bit, it could be to help you get out of the saddle. We don't know. Well, I don't think it is that. I was told off for saying it's good for sprinting a couple of weeks back. Uh, but well, maybe it. someone can let us know why. But anyway, yeah, if you want to see an execution, this yeah, is how to do it. Th th this is a rocker plate and a half, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder what took longer, the actual project of making it or taking all the photos. There's hundreds here. But the finished article is this. Wow. <laughs> I love the fact that it's, it's in the Wahoo font and got the rocker deck. Well, yeah, the... he, he, yeah, just like Wahoo, he's, he's lost a vowel, which, you know, it's, yeah. there we go, rocker deck. Top stuff. With, with Trek logo underneath as well. <laughs> Seriously, that's cool. But please let us know what they're for. Uh, yeah. Next up, this from Christopher, uh, who's an engineer at Brompton. He, his manager cycles to work 17 miles each way every day, come rain, shine or uh, snow and decided to use his old worn-out Ortega chainring to make a clock. Wow! That is cool, isn't it? Dude. That's a seriously cool looking clock. It's a seriously worn out looking chain ring as well yeah. there, isn't it? I've got some that I don't use anymore that are 53 teeth. Uh, I'm not, not strong enough anymore to push them, so I might make a clock out of one of those. Your 53 teeth chain ring in remarkably good condition it as is. well, aren't yes. <laughs> As yeah, new. The, the 39 less so. <laughs> right. <laughs> a hack from us, I think, from that one. Uh, next up, we have got some custom shoes. Always love a custom shoe. Uh, this comes in from Bad on our uploader. Uh, the Australian themed one is to commemorate my time working on Australia's Gold Coast on Aquaman the movie. Wow, look at that. Those. So those are done with a wrap, apparently. I don't know how, but that is seriously impressive. Yeah, you're going to stand out shoes, from the crowd it? with that pair of shoes on when you're riding, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you'd probably stand out from the crowd with this one as well. So my Wheels <laughs> of Karma uh, from Bristol in the UK. Look at that. We've got three stems on there. Mm. And is that a backrest to turn that road bike into no a idea. chopper? It doesn't look very safe, though. It does doesn't, it? does it? I Although, mean, to be fair, if one stem breaks, at least you've got another couple there. <laughs> well, one stem slammed, isn't it? The other, well, there you go, uh, yeah. Uh, slightly above it, another one not slammed at all. Do you okay. slam your stem, bro? Yeah, I do. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> uh, Bodge. Looks like it, doesn't it? Even if you have got a bad back. Uh, next yeah. up. I think the lack of safety makes, makes it a bodge, yeah. Uh, Pang Lao in Bohol. This is from Ji Chuzin Fu. Apologies for all of that over on Instagram. <laughs> uh, environmentally friendly peloton, a load of bamboo bikes. Uh, love the bamboo, but what I like about this is the second saddle in, which just yeah. looks just like an old chopper saddle, doesn't it? Now that is a seriously cool custom saddle, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it looks comfortable. Well, I'd say it's a hack. I'd say it's a hack. Uh, right, then finally, we've got this one sent in uh, from Matt Pearson Ooh. in Fort Worth, Texas. He has pimped out a Shimano 105 rear derailleur by customizing the uh, long cage uh, cage on there and then adding in a 16-tooth oversized jockey wheel. 
that makes it look super cool, doesn't it? Love the look of it. That's another yeah. hack. We've had a lot of hacks this week. We have. What a great week for hacks. Yes. Don't forget, if you want to get involved for next week's show, the hashtag on social media is GCNHack, or you'll find a, a link to that uploader in the description down below. Caption competition now, your chance each and every week to win a GCN Camelback water bottle. And we're actually going to use this opportunity to highlight the fact that Camelback have updated their bottle design. They and have. so we've got three new ones uh, in our GCN shop now the red, uh, the grey, and the clear. I've, I'm not much of a weight weenie, Dan, but I'd say they've shed a few grams off that. Yeah. I think that's a, that's an even lighter bottle. The water still weighs exactly the same, though. Uh, not only yes. do we have the new bottle in the shop, though, we've also got a brand new mug, uh, which you can find as a link to shop in the description just down below. And we've got our keep cups back in stock too. What's a keep cup? It's like a takeaway glass cup so that you don't have to use uh, single use plastics. Ah, nice. I've seen those. I Trendy people have them. I use it quite often. Oh, some other people have them too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. Anyway, should we get on with the caption competition? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, last week's photo was this one of the Paris Bay podium. Uh, Philippe Gilbert, Niels Pollitt, and a slightly obscured Eva Lampart. We, we didn't know who to choose for the winner. Well, there were a couple of perlers, weren't they? So, firstly, David Brazil said, uh, The hell of the North lives up to its name. See, I like that, yeah. see what he's done there. And then Paul Frey said, somebody had a few matches left to burn. Whoa, yeah. that was a good one. So who's gonna be the winner? There's only one Camelback water bottle to give away. Well, I mean, technically there's three, but we'll hide these two. <laughs> yes. Right, ready? We'll need those for the next two weeks. Oh, David! Yes, the oh. hell of the North lives up to his name. Congratulations, David. Commiserations, Paul, but get involved this week uh, with this photo. Yeah, sorry about that, Paul. Uh, this week's <laughs> photo comes from the first stage of the Tour of the Alps and the team's presentation. Uh, this is the Tyrol cycling team. Um, we should start you off together this go time. On, mate. Do you want to go pro? Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> wasn't what I had in mind. Uh, anyway, if you can do better than that, please leave a caption in the comment section down below and we'll choose a winner of one of these other Camelback water bottles this time next week. There's going to be some people scratching their heads. Good luck. Go, go pro. Go pro. See? Right, before we get on to what is coming up on GCN over the next seven days, our customary look back at some of the amazing comments you've been leaving under last week's videos. Uh, starting with under Ask GCN a Thing, uh, where Dan confessed to, uh, well, another animal roadkill story. Crossed traffic and there was a car coming the other way and it got run over. I never had to deal with that road dog <laughs> again, but I did also feel quite bad. But at the same time, there was nothing I could do about that. Anyway, we'll move quickly on from the rogue dog stories to something else. Russell Chiodo was appalled. First the squirrel in the spokes, now the flattened dog. Just how many animals have sacrificed their lives <laughs> for Lloydie's cycling career? The truth is out there. That's probably why you were so desperate to save that sheep. The in squirrel Wales. in the spokes wasn't me. That was my friend with the spinaches on. I just uh, had to put it out of its misery because it was severely injured. Yeah, to be fair, I've, I've, a good few have died in my cycling have, career as well. Yeah. Oh, have they? Oh, you're worse than me then. Uh, if you'd yeah. like to know what the dog story was, head over to last week's Ask GC Anything. Also underneath that very same show from James Jacobson. Two Saturdays ago, I was riding, uh, riding and a corgi tried to chase me. He could barely keep up with those stubby little legs. <laughs> I felt sorry for him, so I slowed down a bit so as not to hurt his pride. <laughs> How generous of you, James. Yeah. I like the fact that he technically said, uh, I was riding a corgi. Yeah, I know, that's what confused me at the start. <laughs> anyway, uh, you, also... It's <laughs> just amusing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was sitting on a corgi. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there we go. Well, well, James would have to have equally short legs for that to work. Yeah, he would, it? yeah. Right. Anyway, underneath, uh, skills. underneath the uh, Alp do uh. Zwift video that uh, Chris did, where he went and mm. rode the actual climb and did it on Zwift as well. Remarkably similar, actually, the comparable numbers on it that. Well, they? Uh, anyway, Chris Anderson said, I strive for the day that I can average 300 watts plus for that amount of time. So insane. insane. He's a strong lad, he is. is Chris Obi, but he pushed himself. His heart rate was almost 200 by the end of the Alp do Zwift indoor Whoa. segment. Crikey. That's pretty punchy, isn't it? Uh, right, underneath the uh, technology that could change cycling video, uh, CNE said the Chinese have developed the first virtual news presenter. Oh, How long no. for the vir first virtual cycling presenter? They're here, oh, he says. Man. Yeah. Our days are numbered. Yeah. Well, to be fair, there's um, uh, that chap, what's his name? You know, Jon Gottlich. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's, I, I, I've heard it said that he's not actually real. And uh, anyway. No. He'll be after our job soon enough. He's based on me, apparently. 
<laughs> right, on the channel this week, uh, on Wednesday, we are going to show you how to fuel for cycling. Uh, and then on Thursday, it's the top 10 moments of the racing season Whoa. so far. Uh, Friday, as ever, it's another edition of Ask GC Anything. Yeah, on Saturday, uh, we promised that it would be last weekend, uh, but it's not. Uh, we were a bit too wired on caffeine to get it out. Anyway, it is the how to make the perfect coffee at home, plus, me and Dan actually get taught how to taste coffee, which was quite an interesting experience. Uh, and then Sunday, uh, if you're wondering why I look a little bit knackered, uh, I've just got back from Scotland, where uh, Mark Beaumont uh, put me through my paces on an ultra endurance got fight trip. Got the size in bits. He's got an Achilles tendonitis. He's just tired. He only just got into the office half ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Anyway, so the full story is out on Sunday. Make sure you watch because, uh, well. I suffer, which is always good, and then also it was the most breathtaking yeah. place I've ever been. And then the rest of us suffer when you get back. <laughs> uh, Monday will be the racing news show, Tuesday we're back in the set for the GCN show, but we've also got some live racing for you over on Facebook this week. The Tour of the Alps, if you're in North or South America, uh, will be live with myself and Martin McCrossan, and we're also going to have extended highlights in North America of both Flesh Fallon and Sunday's Liege Baston Liege. Ah, oh, quality. We shall finish now with... Extreme Corner. Now, we often get a lot of complaints that we use too many dirty mountain bikers on Extreme Corner, so to satisfy those of you who've made that complaint, here's some extreme road riding. This is Fabio Jakobsen at stage three of the Tour of Turkey from last week. Uh, here you can see him being piloted by lead out man Max Ricciesi. Look completely boxed in still with 500 meters still to go. Somehow Ricciesi finds a small gap. Jakobsen follows him, bumps off two other riders, finds himself a bit of clean air. Ricciesi leads him out. Jakobsen goes. He collects a flag from the crowd along the route, manages to take the victory, puts his hand in the air, complete with flag still attached a well-worthy extreme corner entrance. Absolutely. Maybe. That is an extreme sprint, if ever there was one, both <laughs> in terms of performance and indeed, well, just what the rigmarole they had to do to get there. Yeah, uh, the full video of that is over on our Instagram, Twitter and Facebook social media channel, so if you want to see the whole lot, it is well worth watching. Yeah, a long way from the old Mario Cipollini uh, lead-out trains, isn't it? Yeah, things are completely different now, and I think I, quite a lot faster, to be honest. Although, actually, Cipollini probably should have once picked up a flag en route to victory. That would be kind of... Sort of thing he'd do, wouldn't it? Yes. But anyway, opportunity missed, Mario. Uh, right, that brings us to the end of the GCN show, I'm afraid. Uh, do remember those Camelback water bottles and the new mugs in the GCN shop. Make sure you check those out. Uh, and if you want to watch another video right now, then the Zwift, Alp de Zwift versus Alp Duez video that Chris shot, definitely worth a look. Yeah, he really pushed himself hard. That's almost like an extreme corner in itself. It's just down here. <laughs>